Principle number six says, those who do not love the Lord will not help you serve the Lord. Each of us, if we're coming from a life of ungodliness or worldly lusts, if we have found ourselves in situations where we have stubborn habits and addictions, chances are we have friends or relatives or people that are close associations with us who do not love God. And we have to realize and conclude in our lives that those who do not love God will not help us serve God. The book of John, chapter 15, Jesus is talking to his disciples. And he reminds them, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. The world loves the things that are, that are from it. But the Bible says, because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. We once were in the world, but God has chosen us. He has pulled us out of the world because I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, or as a result, because I have chosen you out of the world and pulled you out of the world, he goes on to say that the world hates you remember the word that I have said unto you, the servant, that is the employee, those underneath obligations of the leadership, the servant is not greater than his Lord or his master. He goes on to say, if they have persecuted me, the word persecution, a lot of times people think it has to do with throwing stones until you die or crucifying you or burning you at the stake. And those are horrible forms of persecution. But the word persecution literally means to pursue with pressure, to pursue with pressure. And that can be verbal persecution. That can be physical persecution. It could just be influences in your outside life, your friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, people who are trying to influence you and they pursue you to try to pull you away from the things of God. He says, if people have pursued me with pressure, the Lord Jesus said, they will also persecute or pursue you with pressure as well. If they have kept my saying, if they obey me, chances are they'll obey you. You'll find that your friends may be somewhat alienated from you as you begin to live for God. If they're not alienated from you, then you might have a present witnessing opportunity. If they are alienated from you, you need to stay back from them, allow God to work in their life, continue to develop spiritually so that you can have a future witnessing opportunity. But most of the time I have found that my old friends, when I started to try to get right with God, and all of the other people I counsel, when they try to get right with God, most of their old friends, they do not want them to succeed in their newfound Christian faith or life. They will try to lure you back into sin. They want to see from your failures that the Christian life doesn't work. Why? Because... Misery loves company. It relieves their guilt to see you or I fail. They know what they're doing is wrong. And they would love for us to do right, but they don't like how it makes them feel when we do right. And so as we begin to grow and develop and find happiness in our life in Christ, they become more and more miserable and realize, I need to do that. But because God has not yet chosen them out of the world, they have not accepted Christ as their Savior, they find themselves mired in their struggle, wanting to pull you back. The book of Proverbs chapter 24 verse 15. The Bible says, lay not wait. Don't sit back and wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Uh, Spoil not his resting place, for a just man falls seven times, but rises up again. A lot of people always talk about that verse, and they say, well... Seven in the Bible is a number of completion. So this verse is saying that a just man will fall until he's completed the following down process. And I I don't know about all that. All I know is it says just men fall multiple times. If just men can fall regularly, then those of us who are trying to learn how to develop spiritually ought to be given opportunities to fall. But the Bible says that your friends, your former friends who do not love God, will be the ones who will lay traps for you so that you'll fall over and over and over again. Here it indicates as many as seven times, but if you're wise, you'll rise up again. Though you may fall, you'll rise again. But the Bible goes on to say, but the wicked, 
The wicked shall fall into mischief. Rejoice not, he says, when your enemy falleth. Let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. We should never be happy when people do poorly in life. We should always be glad when people do well. Because we're Christians. We love the things of God. But those who do not love God, they're not going to help you serve God. Psalms chapter 1 gives us an indication on how to be happy and how to prosper. It starts with the word blessed, an old English word for the modern English word happy, and it ends with the word prosper. And in between the word happy and in the word, between the word prosperity or prosper is connected truths, an equation, if you will, that if you follow it, you will not only be happy, but every single thing you do will prosper. They say there's three things that verse says that you should not do and two things that you should do. The first thing it says that you should not do is it says do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Counsel is advice. Ungodly is those who do not love the things of God and do not live for the things of God. That's an ungodly person. So he says, do not get advice from those who do not love God. He says, do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. To walk is to take repeated steps. So that means to say that you should not take repeated steps under the influence of ungodly counsel. If you will avoid ungodly counsel, you're one step closer to being happy and prospering. The the second thing he says is you should not stand in the way of sinners. First, he tells us where not to walk. Then he tells us where not to stand. He says, don't stand in the way of sinners. The word way is the old English word for the modern English word course of life. He says, do not stand in the course of life of wrongdoers. He says, don't hang out with people who do not love God. Don't get advice from people who do not love God. If you do not stand this way and you do not walk this way, way God says you're on your way to being happy to prospering in everything you do the third thing that he says that we ought not do is not only does he tell us how not to stand not only does he tell us not how to how not to walk but he goes on to tell us how not to sit he says do not sit in the seat of the scornful. The seat of the scornful is, is the position of critical people. Their seat and their scorner. They sit down and they tell people negative things. When they get up and leave, you take their position. That, what that means is you allow yourself to be influenced by critical and negative people. So he's saying, listen, don't walk this way, don't stand this way, and don't sit this way. Don't walk under the counsel of ungodly people. Do not hang out with ungodly people, and do not allow your to listen to the criticism and negativity of people that are living an ungodly lifestyle. Don't stand this way. Don't walk this way. Don't sit this way. But you know what I like about the Word of God? God will not only tell you where not to stand, where not to sit, and where not to walk, but He'll also tell you where to stand, where to sit, and where to walk. He says, don't stand in the, I'm sorry, don't sit in the, in the seat of the scornful. But He does say in Galatians that we are seated in the heavenlies. He says, said, don't hang out with ungodly people. Don't sit and take their position and listen to their critical natures, but rather realize that you are seated in the heavenlies. Your name is written down. There's no reason to take a negative, pessimistic view of life. There's no reason to think thoughts like that. There's no reason to think critical thoughts. There's no reason to take those positions. You're already seated in the heavenlies. You ought to act like you're heaven bound. He says, don't sit this way. Sit like you're in the heavenlies. Not only does he tell you not how to sit, but he tells you how to sit. He doesn't only tell you how not to stand. He tells us how to stand. He says, don't stand around with those who do wrong. But instead, in the book of Galatians, he says, stand fast. That word fast is where we get the word fastener. He says, stand firmly fixed in the liberty, the freedom, wherewith you have been called. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. He says, I'm going to firmly fix you in a position of, of freedom and you will be free in your life and you must stay firm and fixed in that position and do not go back to standing with people who do not love God. Stay away from those types of people but stand instead firmly fixed. Not only does he tell you where not to sit. Don't sit over here with ungodly people. Sit over here in the heavenlies. Not only does he t tell you where not to stand. He says don't stand with the ungodly but rather stand 
begin to fast in the liberty that I have given you. But then he tells you, don't walk this way. Don't walk with the ungodly. Don't get advice from those who do not love God. But in that same self, same book of Galatians, he says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. In principle number one, we explain to you that the lust of the flesh are the desires of your soul to lead your body. And he says, you listen to me carefully. If you will not, if you will take steps of action after the influence of the Spirit of God, you will not do what your body wants you to do. You'll do what God wants you to do. And God tells us that if we do these things and don't do these things, <laughs> that we will, we will be happy. And everything we do will prosper. And what does it say that we're not supposed to do? He says, don't hang out with people who do not love me. Do not hang out with people that do not love God. Why? Because those who do not love the Lord will not help you serve the Lord. And if you don't have people helping you serve the Lord, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to be prosperous. That's why I like the ministry of Reformers and Amos and this great church that hosts it. They love you. We love them. We try to live godly. They try to live godly. We try not to be critical or negative. So as a result, if you will follow the guidance and direction of this program and this great local church, you'll find out that those who love God will help you serve God.